come a long way since Gazelle. What's up, everybody? It's Joe from Complex. We're in Atlanta at Ama Meniere with NBA Hall of Famer and an Emmy Award-winning analyst on Inside the NBA and all-around legend, Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, yeah. When you come to Ama Meniere, ask for champagne. And this is the secret move right there. You get whatever you want. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> gonna do some sneaker shopping tonight. Gonna see what he's feeling, what he's not, and then hopefully he's gonna buy some sneakers. I'm gonna buy some, remember, champagne. Let's go. Shaq, I want to talk early beginnings. You were a size 15 back in the day, but you wore Jordans in size 13, and to make them fit, you had like an interesting process. And I haven't seen those Jordans until today. These are 1985s. Those are the ones that messed my feet up. Yeah, so talk about that. You were trying to fit two sizes too no, small. No, because everybody was copping them, mm -hmm. and it's the first time shoes like that ever came out. I was wearing Converse something like buddies that's what they call it. you you remember buddies I, I don't okay buddies were the cheap shoes that had their own theme song okay you don't know the song buddies they make your feet feel fine okay buddies okay they cost a dollar 99 oh i do yes, yeah but yes, so yes. so when those came out everybody had them so i had to cut grass walk dogs babysit and then when I went to the store, he's like, we don't have size 15, we got some 13s. And I tried them on and I stretched them and I was walking to school and they was just hurting. And those are the last time I had a pair of Jordans. You, you were getting corns, right? Well, no, I have corns now because of those shoes. Really? Yeah. Wow. Were you putting them in water or something? Yeah, uh, for us, it's an old tradition that if you put hot water and leather, you can stretch them. Okay. My great grandmother, my grandmother taught me that. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. In, in my Jordans, it didn't work. I actually played in them too. So really? Was, yeah, I, I played uh, a whole season in them. And wow. My feet are terrible. Still suffering from them. Yes. You're all American in high school, and then it was East Bay. They were letting you buy from East Bay, right? Yeah, I was buying from East Bay. So after I found out I couldn't be like everyone else and wear Jordans. Then uh, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson came out with the Converse weapons. I went back to the same store. They had some Converse weapons okay. that went up to size 17. So I was a Converse guy. Got it. Uh, I was like, forget Nike. They don't make my size. I'm a Converse guy. Then when I got to college, we had a deal with LA Gear. Yes. When I got drafted, they gave me the opportunity to have my own shoe, Reebok. Nike was interested, but they didn't want me to have my own shoe. And then the infamous story that a lot of people know, you go to Nike headquarters, dripped in Reebok. Yeah, because I knew at the time that I wasn't interested in being another guy on the shelf. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have my own line, my own shoe. I wanted to come out with a bang. You know, my motto was making people remember my name. And instead of proving myself first, I wanted to have my name out there first, then prove myself later. Reebok had offered me some money. And to get the money higher, we said, hey, we're going to Nike. They're offering us the same thing, which they weren't. So then when I went there, I knew I wasn't going to take that deal. So I wore a Reebok jacket. They liked it. So they gave me an extra million for that. Shaq, you signed to Reebok and you immediately request, put my shoes next to the Jordans and Foot Lockers and all different stores. Why did you do that? Because I learned in business, especially in the retail business, you want to be where the traffic flow is, right? Mm -hmm. Nike was the kings at the time, right? So at the first quarter, I wanted to be away. Sales were okay. So I, I'm, I'm not the number one player, but I'm not the number three player here mm -hmm. either. So my sales should be a little better than that. So then we go back and it was like, hey, Mike has this space. I was like, just put me somewhere next to Mike. And then I, I like giving people the option. Yeah. Of course, they're going to come in and look for the mics. But then you have people that are similar to us. They like to be different. Yeah. And how many of shoes are there? Yep, Shaq Attack. So I wanted to be different. And this is what I call cosmic blue. Okay. Because when we, we when, when we were designing, they just kept saying, no, give me something that's going to stand out. And this color right here was similar to the Orlando Magic yep. color. So we this was right here was my first shoe, and it did very well. I think over like five million. Five million pair first and, year. And is it true that the rookie season, you wore a different pair every single game? Yes, I wore a different pair every game because I could. Okay. And I wanted to take them off and, and you know, give them to a fan. And you see that as a big trend now, but yeah. you were doing that back then. Yeah, it was, but and another reason was I used to wear one pair of shoes for two, three years. 
True. So I said to myself, now that I'm the man, a new pair every day. I, you know, you like to feel fresh. And you know, yeah. some, some games have you know, scuff marks and be wrinkled. I don't like my sh I mean, excuse me. I don't like my stuff wrinkled. So I would uh, I wear a new pair every game. So then we got to get to 1998, you know, with Reebok. You're walking outside of an arena and a woman comes up to you and says, start making affordable shoes. She was very upset mm -hmm. and she said, why don't somebody make affordable shoes? And I was new to the business, didn't really understand price point. I was just trying to compete with everybody else. So I had a couple thousand dollars. I was like, ma'am, I don't make the price. Mm -hmm. Here you go, buy your son whatever you want. Jordans, Iversons, Kemp's. And she smacked the money out of my hand. She said, I don't want your money. Why don't you make an affordable shoe? And that kind of touched me and I had yeah. to, I had to go back to the 70s and the early 80s. Damn buddies I used to wear cost $19, $20. And I would never, like, when I asked my dad for the Jordans, he gave me the craziest look ever. Like, I'm not giving you all that money for no shoes. Right. So I had to go do extra stuff to get it. So I kind of felt her pain and I made the call to Reebok. And I said, listen, when this contract is up, I'm going to do other things. I'm going to build an affordable shoe. We parted ways. And then, luckily, the kids are bringing the retro shoe back. You know, they called about my Shagnosis. That was a hot shoe for the kids to bring back. Yeah. A couple years after that, the group that I'm with, Authentic Brands Group, we now own Reebok. How is that? Is that just crazy full circle to see? Like, so many smart investments, but like, you signed to Reebok back in the day, you invest in Authentic Brands, and now Authentic Brands acquires Reebok. Like... I could just remember when Reebok was number two. Mm -hmm. We were number two. We, we, we were close. You know, Nike is always going to be Nike, but we, we were right there. And then, you know, all these other brands came in, then Adidas acquired Reebok and, you know, took all the things that they were doing and kind of washed them away. So I kept telling Jamie, let's buy Reebok. So now that we got Reebok, we, we, we're going to be looking to claim our spot back. You specifically made your line in Walmart resemble the Jordans. Like, were they the Jordans that you loved No, see, up? see, you know, a lot of people say I'm resembling Jordan, but what you have to understand about the Shaq line is Nike owned us at one point. Okay. And see, a lot of people don't know that. Interesting. Yeah, so because if they didn't own me, I wouldn't be able to do that. But the guy who I had a joint venture with, Nike had owned it, then Nike didn't, didn't want us, so I brought it back and then sold it to somebody else. So, Interesting. Yeah, so Is that know, out like, there like that? No, nah, I don't. But I mean, but you know, a lot of people, oh, he's copying. I didn't design that. They designed that. Okay. They approved it. They let it go. And it, it got to be hot. But. Listen, you, you know in, in this world you live in people, oh, he copied? No, Nike owned the Shaq brand at one time, but they they didn't pay any attention. They didn't want anything to do with it. So they gave it back to me, and then I grew it to 600 million pairs sold since then. Shaq, as someone who is such a big investor and big into business, what do you think about like sneakers reselling in that market, kids making money off reselling sneakers? I don't really know much about it. Okay. But anytime a kid could do something business-wise and stay out of trouble, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. I remember one time on Melrose trying to buy a pair of my shoes. They were like $1,000. I had to call Reba. I was like, is this legal? Mm. He said, yeah, kids is buying them and they're reselling them. So to each his own, I wish him well. You know, some people learn about business different ways and definitely teach you about the, the, the retail business, uh, teach you about other business. I wish I was a sneaker head, but I'm not really a sneaker head. Mm -hmm. I've been wearing Reeboks for 30 years. I now wear Toms. Comfortable. Yeah, it's just, I don't like, I don't like bending down to my shoe anymore, so. Okay. I love Toms. Yeah. And I love any shoe that's a slip on, I'll buy it and I'll try and get it made. Okay. One thing I want to talk about that I love, Obama comes off the flight in Phoenix and waiting for him is a size 23 Shaq shoe. I was in the area. You weren't there though, yeah. No, no, I was there. You were? Yeah, I thought a kid, a, the mayor's kid gave it to no, him. No, no, what happened was I was there, but I didn't have clearance. Really? And I didn't want to use my powers. Okay. Because I wanted to hand deliver him the shoe. Right, I was like. Because I met him, but I didn't meet him. So one time I was in DC and I tried to flex my powers. Okay. Went to the gate. Hey, tell Obama Shaq, say I showed my police badge. Mm -hmm. They say, Shaq, we love you, we don't have you on the list. So as I'm walking away, I get a phone call from a strange number, hello? It's the president. And I said, uh, Mr. Obama, how'd you get my number? He was like, come on, Shaq, I'm the president. <laughs> So then I, I knew he was coming to Phoenix. I was in town, so I rushed to the airport again. 
hey, I know Obama's coming. Just like, Shaq, we can't let you in. The mayor's kid was there, right. gave him the shoe. You have, yeah, but I just wanted to meet him. So I finally met him. Okay. He, he, he invited me to this thing that he did at, at the White House, but I'm all for two and just trying to use my powers to meet him. Interesting, because I was wondering about that. I saw yeah, the mayor's I, kid. I, I was there, but you know, the Secret Service and boys like Shaq be, can't be letting people meet the president. All right. I was like, cool, cool. Last thing, I know it may not have happened. Have you ever heard from the woman outside the Orlando arena? No. Okay. Not at all. But everything happened for a reason. Yeah. I don't think it was a blessing in disguise. She was right. Mm -hmm. uh, like, we, we shouldn't be charging these babies over 100, mm -hmm. at least. Like, 200 and 250. The babies that are wearing them can't afford them. Yeah. Again, I take pride in making my little shoe. And I know people are going to continue to support it, but... I don't knock anybody for how they're doing their business, but me personally, as a 49-year-old man, I felt ashamed selling babies, my babies' shoes, 160, 180, 200 dollars. I know a lot of kids get teased for, for, for wearing my shoes, but if you look at my shoes, they don't look like they cost $29, and I always take pride in that. Absolutely. Well, we talked about everything. Amazing interview. Now Speaking I think... of babies, let's buy some babies some shoes. Absolutely. Let's do it. Boys and Girls Foundation, some kids that you support. Let's do it. Hey, one pair, two pair, three pair, what you want to do? Yeah, we'll see. It's up to you. Two, three pair. Let's All do right. it. All right, come on. Hey, Isabella, what you thinking about grabbing today? I'm thinking about grabbing this one and that one. White and red's my favorite color, and black and red's my also favorite color. I like these ones and them one. They got like Laker colors and stuff. All right, for sure, what size? Nine and a half. All right, great. All right, Henry, what are we grabbing today? I want those questions that my boy TJ got. Okay. And these. I like these because they have an inspirational message, human rights now, which is everybody's fighting for. And what else are we thinking about? These. I like those. I love the colors. Same. All right, final price will be $947.43. Y'all got everything y'all want? Yeah. Y'all want one more pair? Yeah. All right, show. Ooh, yeah, yeah, here you go. You're welcome. High five, high five. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Don't tell nobody how nice I am. I had the credit card, dog. I had the credit card. <laughs> Bam. Who's this for? Six. Big dog. Four is here. And for you. All right, get on out of here. Make sure you listen to your parents and your teachers. I need you to report my credit card stolen. So Shaq came through. Thanks so much for taking the time. Kids got a bunch of sneakers. Thanks again, man. Thank you, Complex, and thank you, NBA 2K. Thank you, kids. Yes, enjoy them. All right, go on. Get on out of here. Spending all my money. <laughs> <laughs>